Hi, everybody. My name is Megan Blickman, and I'm the Senior Training Director for the Back to Blue campaign here in Pennsylvania. Welcome to your volunteer canvassing and lit drop training. Today, we'll talk about why we canvass and lit drop, important health and safety protocols. I'll walk you through your canvas or lit drop shift, and then I'll share a little bit of Q&A and takeaways. Today, you'll do a couple of different things. You're going to complete this training, which uh, will help you learn everything you need to know about canvassing and lit dropping. We are gonna download and set up Minivan and Minivan is the free app that we use, which tells you which voters we should go out and reach. You'll also sign up for a shift where you'll commit to take action for Joe, Kamala and Democrats up and down the ballot so we can turn PA back to blue this year. We canvass and lit drop for a lot of different reasons. First, it helps us reach some voters that we can't otherwise contact, whether that's on text message or email, it also helps us do additional outreach to voters that we've called or texted that might need an extra push. Last, we are able to share key information about voting and educate voters about how to vote properly. Our work matters so much. As you can see from this table, having no contact with a voter, they're the least likely to vote. Phone call, more, lit drop, it climbs more, and a door knock makes a voter the most likely they are to vote. Because what we know is at the end of the day, an in-person neighbor-to-neighbor conversation right before voting is our most effective tactic to turn someone out to vote. And that's been proved time and time again by the Analyst Institute, where they said, when we have a conversation with the voter within 10 days of voting and use the right language, we can increase their likelihood to vote. It's pretty cool. We follow a number of health and safety protocols for canvassing and lit dropping. First of all, the health and safety of volunteers and voters is our top priority, and thus all safety protocols must be followed by every staff member and volunteer. Today, you must complete your training and the volunteer health and safety acknowledgement form or questionnaire before beginning each canvassing and lit drop shift. You must not have a temperature over 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit, be experiencing any COVID or flu-like symptoms, you mustn't have been in contact with anyone who has tested positive for COVID in the past two weeks, and you must not have tested positive for COVID yourself in the past two weeks. If you don't meet these criteria, you are not permitted to canvas or lit drop today. In addition, today everything's going to be contactless. Please wear your masks at all times properly over your nose and mouth. Keep at least six feet of distance from all others at all times. And after you've knocked on the door of a voter or rang the doorbell, take six big steps back from the door. All literature should also be left on the door or on the doormat. Here's what you should do before a canvas or lift drop shift. When you arrive, you'll complete our Pennsylvania in-person check-in. And if you have questions while you're there or out in the field, you'll have a point of contact that you can get in touch with. Here's what you'll do during your Canvas or Lit Drop shift. First, you'll go to the correct home of the address that you have in the minivan app. Then you'll knock on the door. You will take six steps back if, to maintain social distancing. And if you'd like, when you're knocking, you can use a golf ball or other small object to knock on the door. After you've taken those six big steps back, wait about 30 seconds. If no one answers, you can move on. When someone does answer, wave and introduce yourself and confirm that you're talking to the voter that's on your list. You should maintain social distancing at all times, including no handshakes, close talking, or physical contact. Also be sure to follow the key components of the script and record the responses in minivan. Don't just read it off your phone, you can make it real and do that by making eye contact and connecting with the voter. You don't need to feel pressured to know every answer. For policy questions, refer the voter to our candidates' websites in the lit. For questions on voting that you don't know, refer the voter to iwillvote.com slash Pennsylvania. At the end of the conversation, thank the voter, leave them a piece of lit, and you can be on your way. There are some important do's and don'ts. First, do finish your entire walk list. If you're canvassing, you know, use the script, make it, but make it real. Be friendly, but persistent. Always maintain social distance and wear your mask. Speak loudly and clearly. And don't forget, have fun because what we're doing is fun and you should always wave and greet the person who answers the door because they can't really see your big smile with your mask on. Things that you should not do, please don't put literature in a mailbox. Don't be rude to anyone or get into an argument. And don't give the voter an out like, do you have a minute or, or are you busy? 
please don't make any physical contact and don't enter anyone's home. What you should do if a voter is hostile is leave the house and if it's necessary, go somewhere safe. If they ask why the campaign is canvassing, explain that you're working to ensure that everyone in your community has a plan to vote and we are taking safety precautions. Let's look at the conversation that we'll have with voters if we're canvassing. We are making a plan with voters to cast their ballots and we're going to discuss the two best ways to vote with them. The first is to vote on election day in person and the second is to return your vote by mail in person to the county board of elections or a drop box. If voters who have a mail ballot want to switch to voting on election day, they must bring their full ballot package. If they do not bring it, they can still vote, but they'll be using a provisional ballot, which we like to avoid. If voters have a mail ballot and they cannot or unwilling to switch to any other option for voting, they can mail their ballot. We highly recommend that they mail their ballot in an actual post office, not a mailbox, and not by giving it to a local mail carrier. Remember, these are the secondary options though. Let's look at the script. You always start with confirming support. If they're a Trump supporter, you can just end the conversation and be on your way. If they are a supporter, go ahead and make a plan with them to vote. We ask them first if they have a plan to vote on election day and where their polling location is. We can share their polling location and then we ask them for, to, for them to make their plan to vote because then they're more likely to actually follow through. Um, we can also have them call the Rise to the Polls hotline if, you, if they need one. And if they have any questions or need help, um, encourage them to call our hotline. If the voter already has their ballot, we need them to take action as soon as possible and we'll remind them how. We need to remind them about the secrecy envelope where they seal their ballot in the smaller secrecy envelope, then place that in the larger return envelope. And keep in mind that if they don't use the secrecy envelope, the vote doesn't count. They need to sign the voter declaration and also they really need to return the ballot as soon as possible. And the two best ways to do that are in person at the county office by November 3rd at 8 p.m. or a drop box also by November 3rd at 8 p.m. And here we see the language that we use to explain the voters two secondary options. As a reminder, these are A, taking your ballot and, and envelopes to the polling place on election day and two, putting your ballot in the mail. Note here that we need to be very clear that we only recommend these types of voting in a very specific circumstance. And honestly, if the person is planning to vote by mail, it is uncertain that their ballot would arrive by a USPS by election day. And we really encourage other options for returning the ballot. We also know that some voters may have applied to vote by mail and not receive their ballot. These folks have three options, going to their county elections office in person to request a new ballot, wait, and if they, when they get their ballot, return it to a drop box ahead of 8 p.m. on November 3rd. And if they don't receive their ballot before 8 p.m. on the 3rd, they could go in person on the 3rd, election day, to vote a provisional ballot. Again, if a voter has any questions, we really want to direct them to our hotline, 1-833-PA-VOTES. We're keeping folks accountable by letting them know we may call them back and we're still vote tripling. Please make this ask for everyone and especially those who have already voted. We know that friends reaching out to friends, neighbors reaching out to neighbors about voting, people are more likely to take that message seriously and ultimately cast their ballot. If you happen to chat with an undecided voter, that's great. We'll use the same skills that we always use, active listening, sharing our story and asking questions about the voters values and key issues. When you're connecting with an undecided voter, it's important to remember your why. I'll take a moment and let you think of the reason that you're here today. Your why could mean something like, I'm supporting Joe Kamala and the Democrats up and down the ballot because the Affordable Care Act helped my family ensure that we had the money we needed to send me to college. Without it, I wouldn't be where I am today. They've always stood up for families like mine. Let's talk a little bit about the expectations while you're out. First, if you're experiencing COVID or flu-like symptoms, you can't canvas. Maintain social distance and proper safety. Don't shake hands or make physical contact. Don't put lit in mailboxes. 
On average, your list is going to have 40 to 60 doors, and you should go to every door. Be sure to sync your data in minivan as you canvas in lit drop and also at the end when you finish your shift. And expect to be canvassing and lit dropping for two hours or more. So come with a fully charged phone. Okay, now we'll go through minivan. First, like I said, Minivan is the app that you're going to use to know which voters you should reach. You'll see a list of people and their addresses in your neighborhood who are potential supporters. And that's how you know where to go. Okay, so get out your phone. You probably already have it in your hand and go ahead and download Minivan. You can do it through the iTunes or Google Play Store. And now let's talk about how you'll actually use Minivan. So first know that if a voter has requested their ballot or if the voter has already voted, you'll see that in Minivan. You'll also be able to see the voters election day polling locations. And that information is under details. If the voter has requested and been mailed their ballot, the voted status will actually read ball mail and you should make a plan with them to return their ballot as soon as they can and walk them through each of the steps to do so successfully, keeping mind of those two best options that we're driving voters to. Next, you should know that that blue V shows up and that means that the voter has already cast their ballot. If anyone in the household is over the age of 75, you should leave lit for the voter and not knock. Age is under the voter's name. When you record voters' responses, you should go to the script on the voters' page. The first thing that could happen is the voter might not be home, in which case you should write, I couldn't reach this contact. Keep in mind that if you're canvassing and someone is not home, you should select not home. You should never select lit dropped. Helpful hint, on an iPhone, you can actually swipe right on the contact's name from the list to mark them as not home. If you do speak to the, vote, the voter, follow the script and record the voter's response to each question. And of course, don't forget to vote triple. You should end every conversation with an ask to volunteer and thank the voter for their time. For those of you who are lit dropping, here's how you enter your data. First, once you're at the home and you've left lit, select, I couldn't reach this contact, then select lit dropped and you're good. And everyone needs to remember, if you are canvassing and the voter is not home, you will leave a piece of lit, but you need to be sure to mark them not home. Only lit droppers should use the lit dropped response. And always be sure to sync that data throughout your shift. You should tap on the cloud on the top right-hand corner of the app to send your results to our database so that we can follow up on your great conversations with voters. In addition, you can check your progress by clicking the three blue lines on the top left hand of the menu. From there, you can select list details to check on your progress. You'll have a few materials to help you out during your shift. First, you'll have a minivan guide. In addition, you'll have your volunteer canvassing guide, a voter protection FAQ, and PPE. You can wear your own or use ours. And be sure just to ask a staff member or volunteer if you have any other questions. Here's what's come next. First, confirm your Canvas shift with your local organizer if you haven't already. Next, be sure to complete that health and safety questionnaire as soon as you get to the location. And last, you can review any of these materials anytime at padems.com slash GOTV. Thank you all so much for being here and getting Pennsylvania over the finish line. You are going to help us turn PA back to blue. Let's get to work.